Hey, what's going on YouTube? You guys, I made a video the other day on the 1911 handgun, and I had my Colt competition, I had my Springfield range officer, I had a T-Sauce, and also another Springfield that I picked up. And, uh, you know, I love 1911s, but what I love about 1911s are the, they chamber the 45 ACP round, which, uh, this gun is loaded, this is my bedside gun. I just, I, I love a 45. I mean, that is a, it's a big, stout round. And uh, the, the problem, though, is with a 1911, you get 7 plus 1 or 8 plus 1 on the newer models. And I still feel that's sufficient. But what if three guys come at you or something like that? Or what if you are a Navy SEAL or, you know, you're on some kind of mission where capacity matters? Because it, it definitely can. This is the Glock 41. It is similar to the Glock 21, except for it is has a longer barrel. It's over five and a quarter inches, slightly. Uh, I just measured it before this video, so. It is a great pistol. Uh, I did polish the front of the barrel just so you get that, you know, that large 45 diameter bore aimed back at you. It's pretty intimidating. And I also have this iProtect, this little light, and a warning, your screen's gonna get white. Watch this. Yeah, <laughs> that's bright. Uh, so possibly if somebody did <clears throat> try to intrude me or something in the night, you know, I, I might not even have to shoot them. I might just, you know, hey, I don't know. But the light, <clears throat> the light's useful because, you know, you don't always have time to grab something right when you wake up. So you guys, I don't normally wear camouflage, military camos, but uh, this is a pair of German ones. I just really like the pattern. And uh, today, based on this handgun, I feel it was appropriate. This was, is what I would consider the ultimate, you know, badass pistol. This is the ultimate military carry, whatever you want to say. If I had to have a, you know, a handgun that was going to be tactical, this is what I would go with, the Glock 41. I mean, Glock is outstanding. Well, what can be said about Glock other than it's innovative, it's a brilliant design, lightweight frame, they're strong. You know, Gaston Glock, he came out with a Glock sometime, it was 10 years after the VP70 by H&K, the world's first polymer gun, and I have a video on that as well. But, uh, you know, Glock is just, they're outstanding. They're they're. I have seen Glocks jam, and I'll tell you how they jam. I actually saw a female friend of mine. She was shooting one just the other day, a Glock 17 Gen 4, and she had it jam right in front of me. And I've, I've had this one jam with myself, you know, probably 10 times, but they're self-induced jams. I'll show you how, how they jam. It's good to understand that about a Glock. Now, uh, I do believe a self-defensive handgun, if you can handle it, I think the 45 caliber is the way to go. We learned that after the Filipino insurrection. I still think, based on my experience of hunting and taking game with a handgun, I've seen better performance out of the 45. Uh, even better than 223 out of a rifle in some situations. So, one thing I'll say, you get a 230 grain ball or a hollow point. And that's just a lot of lead. And even in the 80s, you know, with the 38 Special, uh, the Chief Special, I mean, that's one of the things, the little stub nose 38s. They didn't have much barrel length on those, but they want one of the 150 grain bullets because the heavier bullets would break bone. And at times they would even use wad cutters. And with a 45 ACP, you're getting a 230 grain, you know, hollow point or hardball. And that's the hardball is coming out the other side. The hollow point's going to open up and probably get caught somewhere in there or in the back of the clothing but if you had some plus p stuff it'd blow right through i'm sure uh a human torso that is or you know something of that size but it's just a it is a darn good caliber they're heavy i will say that you get 13 with the glock 41 and this is the practical tactical model with the let's say it's a little over five and a quarter inch uh i did buy this sticker on ebay for about 15 bucks and this sticker is excellent it just kind of it shows you know the profile of it another praiseworthy statement about glock is uh there's no safety and if you've 
if you know me, I don't care at all for a safety. The safety is right here and not messing with triggers. And if you do mess with triggers, you clear and you look at that chamber and you make sure there's not a round in it. Then you can pull the trigger and there's no, there's no fear. Uh, one thing I will say with a Glock, you have to pull the trigger to take it down. And you see these little pieces right here. They just kind of bend down and the gun comes out. This part is extremely light. You know, Gaston Glock's design, it's the metal is integrated right into the polymer there. You know, polymer is that, that's where Glock was famous from. He had that high strength plastic that he was making. And then, you know, and this, that's the thing about a Glock. They just, generally they don't jam. They work and work and work. They jam when you limp wrist them. And I'm going to talk about that more in a minute. Here's a double recoil spring that comes on this model. There's the barrel. Big 45 ACP barrel. And then at this point, you just have the frame. Now I want to mention this because if you own a Glock, this is going to benefit you. Get yourself some metal polish and a Dremel with a little buffer pad. Or, or The idea here, you don't want to take any metal off. You're just polishing it. Go ahead and polish up this piece right here. Go ahead and polish up this metal bar, the inside of it that touches the plastic. And then go ahead and polish up this little piece right here. Just polish the top of that, polish the top of this little piece, and then you want to get your, you want to polish, if you can, that little round piece right there. You just want to polish the top of that little round piece. And that's it. And when you do that, you'll have a smoother trigger. Because those are the parts that can create friction in the gun. I'm just real easy just putting it back together there. Captivated spring. And then the pistol just slides onto the frame, locks up, and that's it. But this is my bedside, you know, gun, you guys. This is the gun that I would trust my life with more than any other. And it's not that, you know, a 1911, in my opinion, is a better gun, uh, but not better for the purpose. It's a nicer gun. Like I said, I've made comments before, higher pedigree. It's a more refined, polished piece of work. But if someone's trying to kill me, I mean, geez, I get 13 plus 1 in the 45 ACP. The gun's plus P rated. Uh, I get these nice big box sights that are easy to acquire. You know, you got to think about that. I don't want black on black in a self-defense shooting unless I, you know, black on black is, you know, I'm going to hit the squirrel off that power line at 25 meters. You know, that, that's, that's a different story. Let me show you the accuracy out of this gun. I'm actually very impressed with it. Now, before I, I show you the target, this is a Springfield 1911 Defender at 25 yards. That's five shots. I sold the Defender after I bought my range officer, but that'll just give you an idea. Sorry about that. The mic was moved there. That'll give you an idea. So there's 25 yards. That's just a you know typical 9, uh, 45 ACP 1911. Here's another target, same same type of thing, Springfield Defender Series. You know, they have the three-dot sights on them. They're not target sights. Here's my first Springfield Range Officer with the black-on-black -black target sights. And here is Glock 41, this pistol right here. That's 25 yards, you guys, five shots. So you can see this Glock is capable. Now there's no way I could adjust that any further. It's always going to be two inches high. But I'm guessing at about 30 or 40 yards, that zeroes out, maybe 50, somewhere right around there. So there's just no way to adjust that rear sight any lower. And I'm, you know, I'm not going to try to sand or grind off part of the front sight. So that's that. You know, I got, I'm going to be two inches high. But, uh, Outstanding gun. That light sure is bright. I don't know. Even in daytime, if you see that, geez. My finger. They have switches on each each side, little rubber switches. So I protect. That's the only light that I found to be affordable. I think they're under 50 bucks. So and they clip onto the Picatinny. They're completely worth it. The batteries are funky, but you know, you hope you never have to use that thing. So you don't really use it as a flashlight. Oh, what else can I say about a Glock? I've had a Gen 2 Glock 9mm. Uh, it was Glock 17. That's the original design. Uh, I've had a Glock 21. That's also a 45 ACP. It's The barrel's not quite as long, and the slide was, was fatter. 
This has the same thickness as a Glock 17, yet retains the 45 ACP round. You know, it's it's this is, in my opinion, is the best Glock ever made uh, for a combat handgun. However, I have heard stories of people in law enforcement that had a, you know, Glock 21, and they, which is identical to this, just a little shorter, a little fatter, but it's the 45 ACP chambering. And I mean, they, they emptied three magazines. They used the same mags as the Glock 21, you know, so they, they put off, you know, over, over 30 rounds of 45 at somebody and it made hits. I, I've heard stories. And then that same guy, now he's carrying a nine millimeter. So that, that's his testimony. Hey, if something like that happened to me, I might, I might do the same, but in his situation, uh, the last magazine he aimed and he was able to finish the job. So it's not it it trust me 45 acp is a better round than nine i just i don't that was that man's experience and now he's switched back to a nine millimeter for more capacity but geez if you have 13 plus one i mean how much do you need i guess he was just panicking and firing rounds which happens which that's why if you do carry a 1911 you gotta you gotta be careful you, you need to make your shots count but you know with something like this you could squeeze off a couple and then still have still have 11 shots so i don't know this is just in my opinion this is what socom or the navy sills or you know those types of uh back when the h and k mark 23 came out that's a awesome gun it's iconic it's bigger than this uh and they're expensive they're like two thousand dollars i've always wanted a mark 23 but this is a better gun if i was a a soldier in you know the navy seals or so i'd rather have this i mean geez i get better magazine capacity you know it's glock quality you see the metal inside the, the mags are solid i have a come and take it metal butt plate on this one and then i have two other magazines that stay loaded that are just in this little you know holster piece and that just sits by my bed so i mean i have gosh i have like like 37 yeah, 37 rounds or, or so of 45 if somebody tries to, to rush at me. And boy, you with a Glock, you can you can change mags out real quick. Has that oversized magazine release. I don't know how I feel a, feel about that so much. You know, it it's not something I'm going to hit by mistake, so I guess it's okay. But, you know, that happens. People do release their mags by mistake sometimes. So when they make these extended releases, to me, they're more for run in competition instead of practical use i but you know it, it's never happened so there's no complaints it is easy to find i'll say that but uh i think i have 230 grain uh hollow points here is remington green and white box i think that's what i'm carrying for home defense with this one but uh yeah i'm gonna put the mag in there that's just kind of how i'll leave it uh this is a great pistol, you guys, and it's accurate and it's capable. You saw the target there. Now, the, I forgot to mention this. How does a Glock jam? Let me pop my mag back out. I'm always checking it. It's just how I, how I think, and I don't mess with triggers. That's the, the main thing in safety. Don't mess with triggers. Okay, so uh, this is how you, you get a Glock to jam. You hold it with a real loose grip, like real loose grip, and then when you pull the trigger, it just kind of it rocks back in the hand. The gun actually needs a sturdy grip to maintain the functionality of the slide when, when you fire. You need a you need that you need that that firm grip on it. You don't want to limp wrist it. Limp wristing it. I've seen girls with Glock 17s, Glock 19s, and they're just holding it so loose, and they're sitting there. You know, it's their first time or something. You're probably right behind them when this happens, and then and then the gun goes off, and then what'll generally happen? It'll jam somewhere about right there. And you'll see that it's trying to load the next round, but it's in their diagonal. It, it just, you, you, you want to somewhat hold the gun authoritative with a good grip. You know, you don't want to limp wrist it. That's how you will jam a Glock with a loose grip. And I've, I can say that the 45 ACP chambering of a Glock is easier to limp wrist than the 9mm. So... I can't get it to do it every time, but, you know, out of two magazines, if I'm sitting there limp wristing it, I, I will get a, get it, get it to catch. 
it'll catch somewhere in there and it'll it'll get stuck trying to load the next round because I was limp wristing it. So just something to keep in mind if you're gonna if you're gonna shoot a Glock, use a Glock, carry a Glock. Like like all guns, you want to have a good good hold on them. And if you do that, then the reliability is kind of off the charts. They're they're very reliable. So I don't know what you would expect to pay for this nowadays. When I picked mine up, I got this one for 420 out the door at a pawn shop. I'm guessing they retail around 690 or something like that. This is the long slide, you know. It's a my target sights are I have a longer radius, or radius. I have more diameter, more uh, radius is the wrong word for sure. I have more. What do they call this? You know, the farther your sights are apart, the easier it is to get a clear sight picture and the more accurate of a sight picture you can you can have. So that's that's the goal. That's that's pretty much what I'm trying to say here. I have a longer, you know, length in between the front and rear sight. So anyways, Glock 41. This is my personal favorite Glock. Uh, the second in line would be Glock 17. The third in line would be Glock 34, the long slide 9mm variant. And then it'd probably be Glock 21. But those are just my picks, you guys, and those are all full-size guns. Uh, great pistol. Really is. This is this is the this is my ultimate combat handgun. If I had to choose one just for combat. But anyways, you guys, this is a Christian channel, and I have a passage that I'd like to share with you all today. Uh, and before I get into this, here I am with a New American Standard Bible. If for some reason you have this gun and you know something about it, you know, sh share your experience. Uh, if you are curious how I have the words in, in white, you do that with nail polish. You actually take nail polish and you put it onto the lettering and uh, then you wipe it off with non-acetone nail polish remover and you can get it get the the lettering to come out like that you can even do it on top of the barrel so if you like the way that looks but anyways the passage today you guys is going to be in the book of second peter and i'm going to start in chapter three second peter chapter three now this is Peter here. Now this, beloved, the second letter I am writing to you in which I am stirred up by your sincere mind by way of reminder that you should remember the words beforehand by the holy prophets and commandments of our Lord and Savior spoken by the apostles. He says, know this, first of all, that in the last days mockers will come with their mocking, following after their own lust and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For ever since the fathers fell asleep, all continues just as it was from the beginning of creation. For when they maintain this, it escapes their notice that by the word of God the heavens existed long ago, and the earth, earth was formed out of water and by water, through which the world at that time was destroyed, being flooded with water. But by his word the present heavens and earth are being Preserve, reserved for fire, kept for the day of judgment and destruction of ungodly men. But do not let this one fact escape you. Notice, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years like one day. The Lord is not slow about his promise, and as some count slowness, but his patience towards you, not wishing for any to perish, but for all to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night, like a thief, excuse me, in which the heavens will pass away with a roar and the elements will be destroyed with intense heat and the earth and its works will be burned. Since all these things are to be destroyed in this way, what sort of people ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness looking for, looking for and hastening the coming of the day of the Lord? because of which the heavens will be destroyed by burning and the elements will melt with intense heat. But according to his promise, we are looking for a new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, since you are looking for these things, be diligent to be found by him in peace, 
spotless and blameless, and regard the patience of our Lord as salvation, just also, just as also our beloved brother Paul, according to the wisdom given him, wrote to you, as also in all his letters, speaking in them these things, in which are some things hard to understand, which the untaught and unstable, unstable distort as they also the rest of the scriptures to their own destruction. You therefore, beloved, knowing this beforehand, be on your guard so that you are not carried away by the error of unprincipled men and fall from your own steadfastness, but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be glory, both now and to the day of eternity. Amen. Maybe you guys haven't heard that passage in a while, and it's just a powerful passage. There's a few things that I just want to give a little commentary on. There's a lot here. I mean, this, this, could, be, this could be three sermons easily. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I could stand up and preach on this. Uh, I used to do that, by the way, you guys. I was an associate pastor for five years at a small church, and I got out of college, and I've just kind of been, you know, kind of been a little stagnant in some areas ever since then. But I do want to teach again one day. I just haven't really found that place yet. But that's something that you can pray for me about if you're still with me. Let me go ahead and start by saying uh, Paul, well, he does make mention of Paul, but of course this is Peter. A, one p popular passage that I see in here, it says, you hear about that thousand years. He says, verse 8, but do not let this one fact escape your notice, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years like one day. The Lord is not slow about his promises, as some count slowness, but is patient towards you, not wishing for any to perish, but all to come to repentance. Okay. This is saying, as far as the one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years is like one day, this is stating that God transcends time. He's outside of time. A day for him could, is like a thousand years. You know, it, it, it's not, that's all it's saying. Some people will take this passage and then they'll go to Genesis and, and there was evening and morning the first or the second or the third day. It's not that there was a thousand years in those times. I, that's a progressive creationist view. I, I'm a day age or, you know, a literal 24 hour solar day. I believe that the Lord did these things. You know, it says he created the heavens and the earth in six days and rested on the seventh. And that's what I believe. So I'm not going to take this passage and, uh, you know, say that it was thousands of years in the, in the point of creation. That's one thing. Also, there are some that believe in the gap theory. And that's where there is this massive gap right there in the opening chapters of Genesis where the earth was made formless and void. Uh, that's, that's how they look at that. But Peter, he talks about, uh, this is in verse 5, for they maintain this, it escapes their notice, but by the word of God, the heavens existed long ago, and the earth was formed out of water and by water, through which the world at that time was destroyed, being flooded with water. See, I see how they could go that route with this, but I also, I believe that this is the, the world being destroyed by the flood where Noah the preacher of righteousness, according to the Bible, was spared in his family. And, it, you know, it was that covenant, that the Ark, the Ark of the Covenant. I mean, the they were safe. He feared the Lord and was a righteous man and believed. He had faith and preserved and saved his family. And uh, there, I've heard so many sermons about it's, you know, it's the body of Christ, the true body of the church. You know, we're going to be those that are saved at the return of Christ, those that have placed their faith in Jesus Christ, you know, the true sect of, of his people, uh, those rich in faith. Now, I'm kind of getting off topic here, but when you talk about this gap theory, well, let's just say the Bible, it, it does mention three heavens. You have the firmament, the separation of the waters and the waters. That's the first heaven, like this current earth. And then the second heaven, that would be like the celestial, where you have these principalities and powers and, you know, the battles and the heavenlies. And then the third heaven, that's where Paul 
you know, he, he goes on, he, he, he does it very subtle, he's not going to boast, but he, he knows a man, he's referring to himself, he was sucked up to the third heaven, whether in the body he did not know, but he was there, and he saw things that were, they ought not be mentioned, I mean, they were inexpressible, or it wasn't time for it, but as the Bible states, you know, eyes not seen, ear is not heard, you know, the things that the Lord has prepared for those who love him, uh, so heaven, the third heaven is, that's where, excuse me, that's where, that's where God dwells. And that's probably beautiful beyond measure. There's people and angels and celestial beings, you know, you name it, cherubim, cerebrum. And they've been there for thousands of years at this point, perfecting that city and adding their own touch to it. And I'm sure it's just glorious and spectacular, but we are here in the first heavens, the original, you know, this is. It was at once the Garden of Eden, and then, you know, that was, man was driven from the garden, and things were hidden, and uh, so we're looking for a new heavens and earth. God is not slow about his promises. There will be, come a time for judgment of the unholy and people that are mocking him, saying, where is his appearance? But it will come. Peter is careful about that fact. Now, the other part that was very important, there, well, a lot of this, is, there's so much, like I said, to go over here. But the other po point that I wanted to make, it's in one of the, in verse 16. Uh, Peter talks about how in Paul's letters, he speaks things which some of them are hard to understand. He even says that, which the untaught and unstable distort as they also, the rest of the scriptures, to their own destruction. And this, this, we see this more and more today, you guys. We see people that are, that are taking scripture out of context, you know. And, and if you miss it on Genesis or the creation or a gap theory, hey, you're fine. You might have missed something, but you're not distorting, uh, you know, something that leads to salvation or some type of doctrine where you're trying to justify sin or something. Because the Bible talks about that, you know, something like that, you're pretty much going to receive swift destruction if you're, you know, if one falls into the ditch, I think Jesus even mentioned a parable about that. You know, many fall into the ditch. I mean, you, you don't do that. Uh, so in many things, they are complicated. The Bible even says that Paul, as he, you know, as he taught in his teachings, in his writings. And the unstable, they distort. So they're probably unstable in their faith. Uh, they distort to their own destruction. You, therefore, beloved, knowing this beforehand, be on your guard so that you are not carried away by the error of unprincipled men and fall from your own steadfastness, but grow in grace. Grace is love. It's undeserved favor. Grow in the love of God, understanding his grace. I'm getting carried away here. And the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. There's another scripture asserting the deity of Christ. To him be glory both now and to the day of eternity. Amen. That's just a beautiful ending there, but uh, anyways, I just wanted to share that scripture today, you guys. That's the New American Standard translation. I believe it's our best translation in the vernacular from the Hebrew and Greek, which I've taken classes in that, so, and I love the King James and the New King James, the uh, ESV. There's many good translations, you guys. They're all pretty much exact thought for thought. It's... There are some that, uh, like the message or the BEB, that I just don't care for at all. But All right, well, I'm rambling on. You guys have a blessed day. If you are able to find a Glock 41 or a Glock 21 and you're wanting a 45 caliber Glock, yeah, don't hesitate if you can find